I'm going to show you how to take apart and put together the Ultimaker 3 AA core Otis. So you're going to need um, a 7mm crescent wrench. This is the most important tool. And you will need a 2mm hex driver. You can just use an L-shaped Allen wrench, but the one that Ultimaker supplies with some printers is great. You're going to need some kind of something like this probably. This is the uh, Andres Olsen torque wrench. Um, you're going to need one of these two tools. I'm going to use both. Um, and you'll probably need a jar opener, rubber jar opener pad. So, there's a part in here that's incredibly delicate. It's so easy to break this thing. Um, I don't know if you can see it in there. I call it the neck, but the neck is in there. Right about in there. It's so thin. It's about the thickness of two sheets of paper, maybe three sheets of paper. It, Otis, Even this first step of removing this, which seems so simple, if you grip it back here, you can break it, because when you're applying torque here, you can break the neck. So you want to grip it by, not touch any black plastic, but grip it only by the brass part. If you can't, if your fingers aren't strong enough to do this, then grip it with, you know, maybe some pliers like this. But make darn sure the pliers are not touching the black plastic when you do this first step. So, this little metal piece that came off here is curved slightly. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like curved like this. And so you want the two tips of that to go down and touch the two, um, the, the heater and the, the sensor. Make sure they can slide at this point before you do anything else. Make sure they're loose. Okay, so now we get to the dangerous part. We're going to put the crescent wrench on here and the Olsen tool here and you could use a socket wrench if you really must. This tool will put out about 0 0.7. 0 0.3 newton meters is about the amount of force if I, if I took this socket off and just used my bare fingers that's about how much force I can produce with my bare fingers, about 0 0.3. We can produce a lot more than that with this. Um, so it's important not to touch any of the black plastic when you do this step because any torque at all in the black plastic will be going into that skinny neck here. So here we go. Alright, I already broke the start of the connection but now the problem is this block move. I'll hold this like this and I'll turn only the heater block. Now let's turn a little further. Okay, it's nice and loose now. Oh, we can pull this out. Um, so there's the nozzle. It's very long. It's got a fine pitch thread. It's an M7 fine pitch, not an M7 normal pitch. Also, don't forget to remove the uh, the O-ring here. Otherwise, you'll have trouble getting this on. The uh, silicone O-ring, or whatever it is. Okay, that's the harder step. Let's, um, now we're going to take this, undo this. Now at this point, as long as you don't touch this hex thing, we don't have to be all that careful. Um, there's a pretty strong spring in here. So I'm going to grip it like this. So that my, my palm is touching the black plastic, but not the hex, and my fingers are touching here, so the spring doesn't spring too far. It's not that strong. And there we go. So this black piece is well attached to the rest, so that when it was in here, if you apply any torque, if, if you've got this on here, and you apply any torque on the black plastic, you're gonna, that torque's going to get to the neck. Look how skinny that neck is. You can see it better now, I think. Right in there. It's like three sheets of paper thick. 
Um, all right, so for this part, I used a vice grip. I'll put it on this here. And you want to make darn sure the vice grip isn't touching this hex part. I want some gap in there. And then I'm going to use this tool, and it should release here where the, near where the vice grip is normally. Oh, good. That's what it did. Um, there's a little bit of glue or something in there. I think maybe they put some kind of thread lock in there. When I did this before, I had to put about one new, newton meter of force to get that out. Um, this next step was tricky for me. You want to hold. So the delicate piece is here. Let's release this. By the way, this piece of Teflon inside here. So this part was harder for me. I had to use this. And this tool, like this, and some. And it was quite a bit of force, like a whole newton meter or two. But um, this is just hand tight now, so I don't really need it. That. So it's okay if this one comes apart first, and then this one comes apart second. In either case, you'll need to use this blue stuff. A blue, uh, you know, one of these jar openers, some rubber or something. Okay, so it's all apart. Time to put it back together. Um, when we put it together, we're going to make sure this is loose. Um, so you don't want to put it together in the same order the opposite order you took it apart. We're going to do it completely differently. So we're going to put this in first. There's a reason for that. Um, You'll see later, it has to do with alignment. So this doesn't have to be all that tight, but I'm going to do about the tension that my fingers can take. Urgh! So these fingers can only take so much. So that's probably about a third of a newton meter. Now let's put this back together. No particular order. Don't turn this hard. Um, so I just did about as hard as I possibly can, which is not very hard, that step. So this black piece here, um, and then we're going to leave this loose. We need to leave this loose because we need this black piece to spin. This black piece goes under there, like that. See, this piece goes under there. Now we need to screw this on here, but we need to do it while it's inside. All right. And we want to put no torque on here. This is a thousandth of a newton meter. If there's any torque at all, the slightest torque, you can get out your crescent wrench. Um, make sure this is loose, this spins freely. So even if I do screw up, I want this black part to rotate. Okay. So it's all the way in. Let's get it tight now. And I'm just going to do and tighten on the brass. No torque. X with no torque on the um, black part. Okay, so now let's get the wires in. Heater in the sensor. Okay, they're in there good. And now we want to tighten this piece here, um, which will set this position. And we want this to be straight. So you want to look down on this, but not grip it while I twist, because then again, the torque will be on the thin neck. So I'm going to grip 
the heat sink and try not to grip the black plastic at all. I'm going to look straight down on this, tighten it up, turn this very gently. That's probably good enough. Alright, I'm going to turn it really hard, but I'll use this just a little bit. But you got to be really careful not to twist the black plastic because that puts stress on the neck. Okay, the rest should be pretty easy. I'm going to get the circuit board back in here. Snaps in kind of. Put the spring on. Put this piece on. Or still looks good. Everything still feels good. It's good. Ah, it's kind of crooked, isn't it? Oh, it's loose. I see it's not tight against that. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to have to take this apart and start over, but I'll show you the last step. Make sure this is like a smiley shape from that view. Put the two tips down, and again, this is an easy place where you could totally destroy your core. So you want to grip it by only the brass, not the rest. And go as tight as I can go my weak fingers here. There it is, back together. Except this rotated when I wasn't paying attention. But I'll fix that in a minute. Um, my website is thegr5store.com. I sell Ultimaker parts.